Okay, come on in everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a beautiful day outside and inside, hallelujah. We're gonna kick off here in just a few minutes, but before we do, I've got a bit of encouragement and instruction for you to do. I want you to go and greet somebody with gray or white hair. Gray or white hair. That's even if you dye it, gray or white. We love our older generation. Hallelujah.
All right, everybody. I trust you had an opportunity to greet some people, our lovely gray and white-haired folks. Hallelujah. We're grateful. We're grateful for everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just wait for some folks to get back to their seats. Hallelujah. I got some good news to share with you, so if you could find your seats, that would be great because we got some really good news to share with you. Well, I trust this good news is going to provoke us in our worship this morning. So many of you might not know, but uh, Mark Smethurst, who is an elder here, and Tim Jones, who's one of our evangelists that we uh, support, they both just re recently, I drove them to the airport to go to Brazil. So they're on a mission in Brazil to visit some people, to host some meetings, and Tim just texted me yesterday and said that he had an opportunity to share the gospel in a meeting and a hundred people responded to the gospel. Yeah, we get a little bit more excited than that. A hundred people gave their lives to Christ. And here's, here's the thing. The same Jesus that's in Brazil is here this morning. The same spirit that moves on all the planet is here this morning. We come to a king who is alive, who is ready to move and who is ready to do things amongst us. So let's just stand to our feet as we come and enter his presence with thanksgiving. Last week, if you weren't with us, the Holy Spirit moved in a powerful way uniting us in strength, saying that we're stronger together. And there's something that happens in worship when you, it's not just one person, but two people and three people lifts a praise unto our Father, and something happens. He deserves all the glory and praise. So let's just lift our hands, and I'm going to read a scripture to you as I read that, and then we're going to come and praise the Lord. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead in our transgressions and sins, he gave us life when he raised Jesus from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you and I have been saved. Turn to someone and say, it's by his grace. <laughs> we're gonna have a good time. For he raised from the dead along with Christ and he seated us he seated you and I with him in the heavenly realms. He wants us to have a different perspective. He doesn't want us to look just at our circumstances or our problems where on this plane, but when we're seated with him, we see things differently. We see a victorious king, a conqueror, and that means that we are victorious. God saved you and me by his grace. So let's give him thanks and praise. Heavenly Father, we come with grateful hearts this morning to say we love you and we adore you. There's yes. none like you. Holy Spirit, have your way here this morning. Move among your people. But Lord, let a praise lift in this house that Hallelujah. brings glory unto your name. Holy Spirit, move in mighty power in Jesus' yes, wonderful Lord. name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's love the Lord.
We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. There is no one like you, and we've come into this place to worship you, to give you all the glory, all the honor that is due only to you, Lord. Jesus, you are the name above all names. You are our Savior, our Lord. You are our King. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your voices in grateful, in thankfulness, in thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. There is no one like you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
You reign, Lord. You reign, Jesus. Forever and ever. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. We praise you, Jesus. Jesus the Lord Hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh the Lord Almighty reigns, hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, Lord. Kere yandara basonto robo shere rendele de yandara. Kere braba sonto lobo sonto robo shere. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Keteri and Daraba Santo Lobo Santo Robo Sheridara. Kele Yanaraba Solo Ronda Robo Sheridara. Kere Yanaraba Santo Robo Sheridara. Kere Yanaraba Solo Ronda Robo Sheridara. Kere Yanaraba Solo Ronda Robo Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My heart will sing the praises of him who gave all the riches of glory. When from his throne he came to his own and showed us his love and great mercy, your name is glory. Your name is wonderful, your name is holy and magnificent, mighty and powerful, all my 
to your name. A praise is to him who triumphed over sin. My soul tell the King and His greatness only is good and forever His name is worthy of glory and honor and praises worthy of praise. King and his greatness, for he is good forever, his name is worthy of glory and honor and praises, worthy of praise. All my soul, all my soul tell.
to your name. Oh, my soul, just the voices. Oh, my soul, sing of the one who has saved me. All of my days I will live to bring glory unto your name. question for you this morning, says the Lord. Do I reign? Do I reign in your life? Do I reign in the circumstances that you face? Do you look at your bank balance? Do you look at the news? Do you listen to what the doctor says? And do I reign? Because I tell you this this morning, says the Lord. I have been here since the beginning of time. There is nothing that surprises me. There is no diagnosis that I cannot heal. There is no finance gap that I cannot meet because I am the Lord that provides all. Do I reign in your life? Do you allow the circumstances around you to dictate how you worship me? Because the Lord says to you this morning, I do reign. I am seated on high. I am seated in heavenly places and I have purposed everything to be good everything will come to fruition that I have said. If I have promised you health, there is health in your life. If I have promised you provision, there is provision in your life. If I have promised you salvation, there is salvation in your household. There is salvation in your family. If I have promised you children, there are children. If I have promised you a husband and a wife, there is a husband and a wife. I reign. I reign through all eternity. If only you knew, if only you could see all the riches that I have stored up for you. If only you could see what I see, says God. The plan I have for your life the resources I have and the power I have to fulfill it to you. You wouldn't worry. You wouldn't doubt. You wouldn't be afraid. So why don't you ask me? Why don't you ask me, says God? If only you knew how generous I was. If only you knew how willing I was to pour out my abundance, the abundance of heaven upon you. I want to, if only you will ask, and if only you will look to see what I have in store for you, in store for the ones that love me, in store for the ones that hold their hands open. Don't grasp at what you've got now. Don't worry about where it might go, the value of it now and how it might drop. Hold your hands open, because when you do, I will give you more than you could ask, think, or imagine. If you will just say, God, I trust you with what I have now, I will give you more than you could ask, think, or imagine. And I ask you as well to give it away. I ask you to give it away, says God, because I want to use you to bless other people whose hands are open. I have enough for you. I have enough for them. So trust me, says God, with not only what you've got now, but what I'm going to give you next. people and he says and he says to us what's the price of two sparrows one copper coin but not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it and the very hairs on your head are all numbered and the very hairs on all your heads are numbered So don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. 
You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. And the Lord says today, don't be afraid. The very hairs of your head are numbered. That I see everything. I am ruler above all and I see everything that's going on in your life. And I care and I love you. And I want you to raise your eyes this morning. I want you to raise your eyes and look to me because I'm the God who rules. I'm the God who provides. And you belong to a kingdom that cannot be shaken. You belong to my kingdom. You have an inheritance from me as saints in my kingdom. So don't look to the kingdoms of the earth. Don't look to the rules, rulers and reigners of this earth. But look to me, because I am the God who provides. I am the God who looks out for you. I am the God who knows. I know every hair on your head, and I see it all. So don't be afraid, but look to me, because you are part of a kingdom, my kingdom, and it cannot it cannot be shaken. I'm God, be still. Isaiah 40, verse 28 says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never becomes faint or weary. 
There is no limit to his understanding. He gives strength to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Youths may become faint and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. And they will walk and not faint. It says the Lord, today is a day to be strong because you wait on me. Don't think that as you wait, I'm not with you or my presence has left you. Because as you saw Joshua put his hand on his son to say, I'm with you, my son. So I say to you today, I'm with you. But put your trust in me for everything. Trust me with your heart. Trust me with your soul and with your mind and with your might. Because I'm with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, for encouraging us, for lifting us up to where you are, that our eyes might be on you and nothing else, that our eyes might be on your proclamations and not any other proclamation, that our ears might be attuned to your word and not the word that is carried on any other media, because your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Lord, our response is to love you and to trust you. Because you are the everlasting God. There, uh, you're our heavenly Father. You're our wonderful Savior. And so we put our trust in you today. Thank you. It's easy to put your trust in your Father. We're going to take our tithes, and we're going to take an offering to the Lord, and we're going to bring our tithes as a loving response to a God who loves us. On the screen, you'll see some bank details if you'd like to give electronically. But we have some buckets here at the front if you want to give practically or cash or uh, our stewards will have a, a little envelope if you need one just to, to fill in the details. But we give out of a loving response to a loving God. He loves us. And my heart is, Lord, I love you so much. I want to give back to you and back to your kingdom and back to what you're doing. I want to bring my tithe as a way of honoring you and declaring you are in charge of my finances. Amen. Not any organization. You hold it all in your hand. The whole world. Not just my bank account. So it's my joy. That you would open the windows of heaven into my life. Because that's what his word says. That if we trust him, do, do what the word explains us to do, He'll pour out such a blessing. So we're a blessed people. We're a strong people. Because those that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. And He's with us in it all. Pedro, do you have a song for us? So if you have a, an offering, you want to bring it. We got some buckets. Are you ready to come and give? electronically or physically. God bless you in your giving. God bless you in your tithing. Thank you, Lord. My heart will sing the praises hey. of Him Good job. who gave up the riches God bless of you. God bless you. When from His throne He came to His own and showed us his love and thank you, Lord. mercy. Your name is Gloria. Your name is wonderful. Your name is holy and magnificent.
Father, we want to thank you for everything. Because literally, everything we have is because of you. Amen. You spoke this morning and you said, before time, before earth was created, you were. And Lord, we just say thank you for every provision, every job, every surprise, every gift. And thank you for our family and our children. Thank you for our homes, our brothers and sisters. We thank you for everybody, Lord. We even thank you for our enemies. Because they help shape us. Help us to respond as you would respond, Father. So thank you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise the Lord. She's directing us here. Praise the Lord. Well, we've got a few announcements before we dismiss. God is good all the time. So as you know, a couple of weeks ago, we took up a special offering for Carrie to lay at his feet to meet any needs he comes across the world, and we're thrilled to announce that figure was 7,331 pounds and 50p. (laughs) Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I know that will bless Carrie. Carrie is flying out uh, Tuesday to Cuba, so be praying for him and Carol. But those are certainly things that can help meet the needs. As you know, Cuba's just experienced a massive hurricane, power outages, so there are great needs. So it was at a perfect time that we were able to be able to take this up and send this. So that's great. Praise God. Mark in your calendars this Tuesday, this Tuesday at 7.30 here at All Nations. We're going to be gathering for prayer and worship. It's going to be a great time together. We're just coming to love the Lord and just be led by the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do among us. So it's going to be a great time just to come and praise and worship the Lord. All right, I know it's in your calendars. You guys are ready. Saturday the 12th of November, World Watch. Yes. It's going to be a fantastic, fantastic day. It's uh, 20 pounds per person. This includes a boxed lunch. For 20 pounds, I am excited to see what is inside that box lunch. But it's going to be a great time because we're going to hear from Carrie and from people around the world, our brothers and sisters. We're going to hear a report from Slava. We're going to hear a report from Open Doors, people that are being persecuted. And it's important that we come. It's important for you and I to honor those servants that are suffering. So it's important that we hear so we can come and pray. So sign up for that. Uh, You can sign up online through Ministries Without Borders website. So there should be information in the emails that we'll send out this way that you can click on the link and sign up. Praise God. Well, children, are you ready? They're all ready. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we release the children. Bless them in their time. Holy Spirit, minister to them. Bless them. Let there be joy in the house. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to take a little five-minute break, and then we're going to come back and hear the word of God from Josh Scaife. Hallelujah.
Okay, folks, if you're in the foyer, come on in and join us. Praise God while people are finding the seats. I want to take a moment just to welcome any guests or visitors with us for the first time. If you're a guest or visitor with us for the first time, could you just kindly just raise your hands? We just want to give you a warm welcome. Guests or visitors with us. Hey, welcome, welcome. Hello back there, welcome. Bless you. Hello, bless you. Praise God. Great to have you with us. Uh, we trust you've been enjoying the presence of God this morning. We're not finished because uh, we're going to be blessed now to hear from Josh. Josh uh, is one of the elders here among us. He oversees our, our musicians and worship, so you see him being happy clappy up on the stage, and uh, which is a great thing because Jesus was happy clappy. Uh, and, uh, but more than that, he's emerging in his gift of teaching. And we, every time he gets up, he gets richer and richer. And so we're really blessed. Uh, we've been doing our, strong, our Be Strong series. Uh, we've gotten one message in. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit, it's all good. God has still been speaking because it's not just through a sermon. God spoke to us last night about Be Strong Together. And he moved in the way he wanted to move last week. So God's doing what he wants to do. So that's good. So, but let's be, give a warm welcome to Josh as he brings us the word of God about being strong. I'll use this if you like. Okay, good to see you. Don't worry about microphones, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Lovely. Isn't it good to be uh, in a place where God speaks? Yeah, come on, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Man, God, the creator of heaven and earth, God, the one who's in charge of everything, has spoken to us this morning. And it's even better for me because he's spoken loads of stuff that he was already speaking to me in the build up to this time together. So, so that's good, isn't it? You know, God's good like that. So, um, I'm going to read you a verse that I was going to read you at the end, but I'll read it at the start to give a little bit of context about where I think we're going here this morning. And it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. While you're turning there, I'll just remind you of some of the things God said to us. I didn't write them all down, but some of them. If only you could see the riches of what I have stored up for you. I have enough for you and for others. I reign over everything. Don't be afraid. You are valued by God, known and seen by God. Raise your eyes. Look to me. You belong to my kingdom, so be close to the Father. And we had that wonderful picture, didn't we, of Joshua when he was bringing the prophetic word, and he had his hand on his son's head, and the father says to us, draw close to me. I want to put my hand upon you. I want you to know that I'm in control of everything, that I have something for you. I have so much richness for you that it will fill you to overflowing. Amen? Amen. And uh, one of the verses that the Lord's going to speak to us through is in 2 Corinthians 12. We'll read from uh, verse 9. The context is Paul is talking about um, what he calls his thorn in the flesh. And we won't necessarily try and dig into what that necessarily was because we don't really know. And I think that's part of the reason why Paul says it the way he does. But God speaks to Paul in a situation that Paul describes as a weakness. Paul describes himself having a weakness. And God speaks to him. And it says in verse 9, Jesus said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me, says Paul. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What an interesting set of verses. I don't know about you, but I find that really fascinating. And I, I want to dig into it with you to discover what this means for us. That, that Paul could say, it doesn't matter about weakness, insult, hardship, perse persecution, or calamity, because God has shown me something. His grace is sufficient for me. 
His power is being made perfect in my weakness. When I am weak, then I'm strong. It's just remarkable, isn't it? So we're in this time together talking about being strong. Be strong, be strong, be strong. And, um, and the word for you, if you want a heading for, for your, t- your notes this morning, is the Lord is your strength. Very simple this morning. It's the Lord who is your strength. When we're talking together this, this season about being strong, it is not God cracking his whip and saying, pick yourself up, be strong. It's not him saying, ah, oh, you're weak, be strong. No, it's a word of grace to us. It's a word of invitation to us from Jesus to say, receive my strength. Because the Lord is our strength. So let's have a look at that, just to prove it to you in Psalm 118. If you didn't know already, just to show you that it's here, Psalm 118, verse 14. It says this, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is is my strength. You know, there are times as we follow Jesus that he calls us into something that seems so far beyond our own ability that we just don't even know where to start. Do you know the feeling? It might be for you, it might be that God's told you um, he wants you to move in a spiritual gift. And he's telling you to do it, and you just feel like, I have absolutely no ability. I have no strength in myself. I have, I have no clue. I have, there's, no, there's no thoughts here, Lord. What, what on earth am I supposed to do? Or it might be God's telling you to marry somebody. You think, I have absolutely no ability. I have no strength. I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to be a husband. I don't know how to be a wife. It might be you're having a child, or you've got a child. And you, you look at this child, and you think, I have no ability. I do not know what I'm doing. But God, you're calling me to do it. Every parent in the room has had that feeling, I'm sure. Day one, huh? And you think, all of this is going on, and I have absolutely no idea. I'm holding this, this bundle of flesh in my arms that God has created, and you've given to us, and I just don't know what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dad, but I, I have no idea what mothers, how mothers even can comprehend what's happening when they receive a, a child, my goodness. <laughs> but it could, be, it could be the death of a loved one. And you just feel, Lord, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't have any strength. I don't have any ability in myself for this. It could be leading. It could be leading a community group, folks. And God calls you to do something. You think, I just, I don't know what to do, Lord. But one of the things I love the most about following Jesus is that he calls us in a way that nobody else can call. A boss might tell you to do something, but they cannot change you or transform you to be able to do it. A boss might say, I'd like you to do this task. And yeah, you might have practical skills or you might not. But your boss can't do anything about that for you. They just tell you to do something. But Jesus, when Jesus calls you, the one who's calling you is actually the one who's transforming you. Isn't that awesome? So he can say to Peter, come off the boat, come onto the water with me. I mean, there's no better example than that, is there, of being called by God to do something that requires strength that you don't have. I don't know about you, but I can't walk on water. Peter couldn't. I'm convinced he was a human being like me. He just couldn't do it. There was no strength in him for that. But Jesus was calling him. And the only difference between Peter sinking and Peter floating was the one who'd called him. Not even floating, but walking, my goodness. Because every time Jesus calls, every time, he gives us the power. He gives us the persuasion, and he gives us the permission to do the thing that he's calling us into. Do you like those Ps? Come on. Come on. You've got to have one of those in there. So here we go. The power, the persuasion, and the permission. That was hard work. Come on. Right. So whenever Jesus calls us, whenever, if Jesus says, uh, you're going to marry that person, if Jesus says, you're going to move in that spiritual gift, if Jesus says, you're going to work in that particular place, or you're going to lead that particular group, or I'm, I'm going to walk with you through this season of your life, and this is what I'm going to do in you, every time he speaks to you, every time without fail, Jesus himself is giving you something. He's giving you power. He's giving you the power to do it beyond your own ability. The Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And as the Holy Spirit is is within us and is filling us, he is giving us the power to do the things that Jesus is calling us to do. Amen? Amen. So he gives you the power to do it. He also gives you the persuasion to do it. 
What I mean by that is he gives you the faith to believe the outcome that he's saying it will be. He persuades you internally. He gives you the faith to put your trust in him, to believe in him for the thing he's calling you into. So whatever he's calling you to do today, and for all of us, it's this, be strong. He's giving us the power to be strong. He's giving us the persuasion to be strong. Beyond our mental thought processes, he's saying, be strong. I'm going to give you the faith to take hold of my strength in this situation. He persuades us. He gives us the persuasion to do what he's asking us to do. And he also gives us the permission. He gives us the grace, the permission, the favor that says you can enter into this. I'm giving you permission to be strong today, says the Lord. Because every time he speaks to you, he's giving you the permission to enter into it. He speaks with grace. He says, come up here. Come into what I am in. So every time he's speaking to us, and as he speaks to us in this season about being strong, he's speaking power into us, persuasion of faith into us, and permission and grace into us. So when we hear him say, be strong, we can know his power at work within us to make us strong. We can know the faith rising in our hearts to take hold of him at his word. We can know the permission to honestly walk in the light of what he's telling us to do. He gives his spirit. He gives faith. He gives grace. Amen. To put it another way for you, I read this quote the other day uh, by a guy called Matthew Bradner. He said this, Jesus desires to be for us whatever he demands from us. Jesus desires to be for us whatever he demands from us. So every command of the Lord is an invitation to engage with the Lord. It's an invitation to enter into a greater fellowship and relationship with him. It's an invitation to abide in him. It's an invitation to draw from him, to wait upon him, to rest in him. Isn't that, isn't that what he was speaking to us about this morning? He said, I am strength for you, so wait upon me and you'll renew your strength. Do you notice the relationship? He's the strong one. And he's calling us into him to receive his strength. He desires to be for us, whatever he demands from us. So when Jesus calls you and he says, be strong or be holy or be perfect or be pure, abound in hope, rejoice in suffering, be faithful, he gives us all of these commands, doesn't he? You think, how am I going to scratch the surface of this kind of a life, Lord Jesus? But he desires to be for us. Everything he's demanding of us, every command is an invitation it's like getting off the boat and walking on the water. And really, this is fundamentally the truth of the gospel, that Jesus is for us what he has desired of us. Through Christ and only through Christ are we made holy, are we made perfect and pure and faithful and hopeful and rejoicing and full of faith. It's always and only through the person of Jesus Christ and through his work that we can receive what he's promised. So when he says to us, be strong, he's not saying go down the gym necessarily. He's not saying I'm expecting from you the ability to do what I'm saying you to do. He's instead saying I am for you strength. I am for you strength in this situation. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Amen? In Romans 5, it says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we've now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? You know, salvation is only through Jesus' resurrection life. We can attain nothing of ourselves, genuinely, only through Christ. Only through Christ come all the riches that he's described to us this morning. 
If only you could see the riches I have stored up for you, he said to us. And they're all accessed through the person and work of Jesus Christ. In every way, Jesus is for us. Everything that he requires of us is through him. So he's inviting us today into a deeper sense of relationship with him, a deeper drawing from him, like a deep, deep well, a deeper sense of, I'm going to draw from you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to wait upon the Lord. I'm just going to wait upon the Lord and draw from him the strength because the Lord is my strength. Amen? That's the invitation for us this morning, and I like it. I really appreciate it. God's been refreshing me as he's been speaking this to me. Be strong, not because you just happen to have some ability, but be strong because the Lord is your strength. Amen? So let me read you some scriptures that just reinforce this point, that it's the Lord who is our strength. Because whenever the Bible is talking about us being strong, it's talking about the Lord's strength being in us. Yeah? In fact, oftentimes, physical strength or, or practical ability or political prowess is not particularly um, important in the Scriptures. In fact, sometimes it's even put down because it's just, it's just man being man and trying to be big and trying to be powerful. But the things that the Scriptures honor are the people who've drawn upon the Lord for their strength, like David, you know, and many others, Esther and all sorts of other people who drew upon the Lord, not on their own ability. So it says in Isaiah, we've already read it, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. It says in Joel, let the weak say, I am strong. It says in Psalms, I love you, O Lord, my strength. It says again, the Lord is my strength and my song. It says, you are the God who equipped me with strength. In Nehemiah, it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. In Proverbs, it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. In 2 Timothy, it says, to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In Ephesians, it says, to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And as we've already read, it says in 2 Corinthians, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And do so you see the theme? It's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord who is our strength. Amen? And it's in this last scripture that we read at the start, 2 Corinthians 12, that I'd like us to take a bit of time to see what God is saying to us specifically about this. So you can turn back there. 2 Corinthians 12. Every command that Jesus gives to us, every calling from Jesus comes every time with the power to do it, with the persuasion to believe it, and with the permission to enter into it. Amen? So as he's speaking to us in these days in many ways about being strong, about how these are days that will require of us strength in the Lord, every time he speaks it, he's giving us the power to walk in it. He's giving us the persuasion to believe him, really to have faith in what he said. And he's giving us the permission to enter into it. And so we read then about Paul here in 2 Corinthians 12. Let's just read those verses again from verse 9. He said to me, so Paul is praying, he's asking Jesus to remove this particular thing from his life, this particular weakness. He's asking Jesus, would you take this away? He's not, he's not rebuked, by the way, for asking. And Jesus replies to him, and he says in verse 9, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I'll boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And it's here that the rubber hits the road, friends. It's here. What are we going to do with weakness? What do we do with it? What, what even is weakness? What does it even mean? This is a Christian man, one who's been um, born again by the power of the Holy Spirit, one who's received a taste of the heavenly gift. This is, this is Paul, and he says, there was this situation that was causing weakness in me. We have to ask the question, what are we going to do with those kinds of things? Where are we going to take them? 
Who are we going to talk to about them? What do we do with it? Because if we're honest, we all have them. Whether it's at a time of life, whether it's in an area of life, we have weaknesses. There are calamities. There are insults and persecutions. There are times that are hard. And we have to ask the question, what am I going to do with it? And I'm so glad that the scriptures speak to us about it. I'm so glad that they give us an answer. And so I'd like us to look at it because we have the choice. We can either despair and think that God has abandoned us because of this particular weakness or because of this particular situation. Oh, it must be that God's left me. It must be that God's abandoned me. We could despair or we could doubt. We could think, well, Lord, you may, maybe you didn't really even save me. Maybe that's not actually true. Maybe you didn't save me. Maybe you, maybe you missed a bit. Or we can respond to God and hear what he says to us. So let's look at Paul's reaction. So um, <clears throat> we'll skip back up to verse 7, where Paul says, So to keep me from being conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. And then he goes on to say, but Jesus said to me, my grace is sufficient. So what does Paul do? Well, first of all, it's important to notice, Paul doesn't despair. He doesn't think that God has abandoned him. Do you notice that? He doesn't think that God has abandoned him. He doesn't attribute all these things to, oh, the presence of God had left me, and so I, I was in this situation. He doesn't assume that God's punishing him. He, he, re he remains consistent in his um, knowledge of who God is. He remains faithful to God. He prays, which means he goes to God about it. He doesn't go and talk to somebody else about it. He doesn't w wallow in his own little world about it. He actually prays. He goes to God with it, which means he's not despairing. He's not doubting the, the person of God. He's not doubting his salvation. He's going to God for an answer. He's going to God saying, would you take this away? He was willing to pray persistently and earnestly. He went back again and again. And perhaps when he says, I prayed three times, it means that he prayed again and again and again. But he at least prayed three times. He went back to God and he persistently sought God about this situation. And he, but he was also ready to hear an answer that he didn't expect. And sometimes that's really important for us. In situations like this, we go to God and we take God at his word and we pray and we say, God, what are you, what's going on in this situation? Would you take this away? I need, you to, I need you to show me what's going on. And Paul was ready to hear, actually ready to hear a word that I think he wasn't expecting to hear necessarily. Because it says what he was praying for. He's praying that the thing would be removed. But Jesus doesn't deal with the thing. He doesn't deal with the quote-unquote thorn in the flesh straight away. Yeah? He says, my grace is sufficient for you. What does Jesus do? He starts talking about who he is. Jesus talks to Paul about who he is to Paul. Do you notice that? Paul comes to God about a situation and says, God, would you change this? <laughs> and God speaks to Paul and says, my grace. Do you notice that word? Because everything is an invitation into deeper fellowship with God. Everything is an invitation to step out of the boat, to receive something from him. And so Paul had to be willing to hear an answer that he wasn't necessarily expecting, but what Jesus was doing was he was inviting him into a deeper sense of intimacy and reliance upon who Jesus is. My grace is sufficient for you. Oh, that's just life-changing, isn't it? You know, God didn't say to him, oh, forget about the issue. Just assume it's going to be here to stay, you know. Oh, just, you know, just get on with it, Paul. No, he invites Paul into a deeper awareness of who God is. And you know, weakness is a funny word. This word weakness is the same word that's used of what Jesus went around healing. It's the same word, weakness. It says Jesus went around all the towns and he was healing the weak. When it says healing the sick, it's the same word. He was healing the weak. And we are told that we ought to go around healing the weak and making strong the weak. And so you'd think, well, what is going on here? Why is, you know, why is this still here? When Jesus is the one who takes away these things. He is the one who takes away these things. The message this morning is not, oh, just, you know, just grin and bear it, just accept it. No, Jesus is still the one who heals the sick and raises the dead and makes the weak strong. That's where we're getting to, folks. 
But in the process, Jesus was teaching Paul something. Amen? In the process, Jesus was saying, my grace, my power, my strength is sufficient for you, no matter what you're facing. His strength and his grace are not dependent on ideal circumstances. They're still there, even in in less than ideal circumstances. Even if there's weakness or insult or hardship or calamity, his grace and his strength are still there, still sufficient, still on offer. There's still an invitation to come and draw from him. It actually, the circumstance doesn't matter. That's what Jesus is saying to Paul. I know about the circumstance. I know why it's there. I know what's going on. I know everything. My grace is sufficient for you. Come closer to the Father. Let him put his hand upon you, whatever the circumstance. Briefly, I'd like to explain what these five words are all about. Weakness, insult, hardship, persecution, and difficulty or calamity. They're interesting words, aren't they? They're dramatic words, I think. But let me tell you a little bit about them because it will help us to realize that actually in in all of our lives, there is an invitation this morning to draw upon the strength that the Lord provides. Because it would be easy for me or you to think, I don't have this situation that Paul has. I don't even know what it is, but I don't have one of those. (laughs) Yeah, It would be easy, therefore, for me to write myself off or write myself out of these pages when I believe that God is drawing us into it to realize that actually this relationship he wants with us where we draw upon him for strength is for everybody, no matter the situation. So weaknesses, what on earth are weaknesses? Well, they're these things. They're infirmities or sicknesses. They might be frailties or handicaps. Essentially, they're things that deprive you of the ability to do what you want to do. It's, it's lack of strength. Yeah? It might be a sickness. It might be a frailty. It might be something that just doesn't quite work the way you wanted it to work. But it's something that is depriving you of the ability to do what you want to do. That's what it means. That's what a weakness is, is to be without strength for a task. Insults, those are damages, hurts, violences done to you, injuries. In fact, it's, you know that phrase, adding insult to injury? It's both those things. It's insult and injury. It's, the, it's insult that's got, in, that's got um, injury added to it or injury that's got insult added to it. Essentially, it's this, to be hurting inside or out. To be hurting inside or out. What are hardships? Well, that's to be distressed, to be pressed tightly, to feel forced or compelled by an immediate, urgent need. It's to be distressed because of serious need. That's a hardship, a serious need that is distressing. What are persecutions? The word persecution is about pursuit. It's to be hunted down for what you believe. It's to be hunted down like an animal in order to punish you for your convictions. It's to be hunted down for your faith. That's what persecution is. What are difficulties? They're they're things that cause you anguish. They're to feel like you're in a narrow space where there's no room to breathe or to move. They're difficult circumstances. There's a sense of pressure on you. It is to feel squeezed and suffering. So if we said, weaknesses are to be without strength to do something, insults are to be hurting inside or out, hardships are to be distressed because of a serious need, persecutions are are to feel hunted down because of what you believe, difficulties are to feel squeezed or suffering, then I don't know about you, but we all at times of life will have feelings and situations that, that you could describe in that way. You see? It's not just thorns in the flesh, whatever they are, yeah? What Paul comes to realize is that all of these things do not change who God is. All of these things do not change his nature because the first word that Jesus said to him is, my grace. All sufficient grace and perfect power was still available to Paul, still working in Paul by the Holy Spirit despite this situation. Because, as we read in the Psalms, the Lord is my strength. 
The Lord is my strength. He has grace and power to meet every need, every hurt, every calamity, everything that's difficult, everything that's hard, every attack, every persecution. He has the strength, the grace, the power to meet it. So Paul could say, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. What a dichotomy. That doesn't make any sense. It's a, it, in language, that's just, what are you talking about, Paul? But in the spirit, it's a truth. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. Why? Because God hasn't changed. Circumstance comes or goes. Situation comes or goes. Personal sense of weakness, come or go. God is still the same. All sufficient grace, perfect power, strength out of weakness. Amen? Amen. You know that word strong? When I'm weak, then I'm strong. If you look it up, it's the word dunamis. Yeah? Anyone remember the word dunamis from Roger Aubrey's lessons? Yeah? Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses all over the place. That's a summary, yeah? You will receive power when my Spirit comes upon you. The word is the same. You will receive strength when my spirit comes upon you. Paul is saying, when I'm weak, then I have dunamis. I have the spirit. I have his power. I have his strength. Paul realized that God was actually at work in something so much greater than a circumstance. God himself, by the Holy Spirit, was living his life in Paul. A life of power, a life of strength, and a life full of grace. Amen? Only his power, only his strength, only his grace will meet the needs of the day. That's why he's saying to us to be strong. Because he knows about all of it. That's what he said through Joshua. I'm in control. I reign over everything. So these are days to be strong. These are actually days that will require strength. But the strength it requires is not your own ability. It's my strength in you. It's my grace working through you. It's my filling of the Spirit in you, says the Lord. Amen? He is going to show his limitless ability through our limitations. Amen? He's actually going to do that, folks. You know, there are times in our life when we, we can feel weak. And I, I actually think society has a funny relationship with weakness at the moment anyway. Weakness can be seen as a disqualification, but recently it can also be seen as an identity to be embraced. Society's got a very strange, <laughs> a very strange way of dealing with weakness in life. For, for some, it, it's seen as a disqualification. Oh, you, you, can't, you can't do anything. You look, you, you're weak. You can't do anything. But, but at the same time, also, weakness can be taken on as an identity. This is who I am. This is the type of person I am. This is my identity. I have this weakness. But with God, weakness is not a disqualification. Weakness is not a disqualification with God because it's his strength. I want to repeat this morning. <clears throat> weakness is just a place where God is going to demonstrate again his sufficiency. Weakness is just a place where God is going to demonstrate again his sufficiency, his power, his strength. But weakness is also not an identity. It's not with you to stick and to stay. It's not who you are. You are who God says you are. And it's an invitation to step out of that area of your life and to say, I'm going to receive strength from the Lord in this. I'm not going to embrace it as an identity. And God's helping us with both this morning. These are just areas where God is going to show us again his sufficiency, his power, his strength. And Paul was, was in a place where he just had to hear that word. He was in a place where he had to hear Jesus say, it's me. Come to me. As Andrew said, wait upon the Lord and you'll renew your strength. Because the gospel means that it's, it's not me. It's not me who can achieve it. It's not me who can do it all. The gospel actually means he has become for us everything that he desires from us. That's the gospel. That's what we've come to believe. Only through Jesus, through his perfect life, his death on our behalf, and his wonderful resurrection, only through him can we be what he has required of us to be. He is calling us 
to remember that. It's only through him. It's only his grace. It's only his strength. It's only his power that can achieve the things that he has designed for us to do in these days. So I think it's important for us to say this together. The Lord is my strength. Would you say that? The Lord is my strength. Let's just say it again. The Lord is my strength. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? And I know I'm looking across a room where there are situations that you could describe as a weakness or a hardship or a calamity. But if you can say, the Lord is my strength. Your grace, Lord Jesus, is sufficient for me. Your power is being perfected in me. You're filling me again. Then we can be strong. Not by might or by our own power, not by influence or prowess, but by my spirit, says the Lord. By Christ dwelling within me, I have all I need. I'm able to be strong. So he's saying, he's saying that afresh to us today, and I believe that he's saying that specifically to some of us who have seen, quote-unquote, a weakness, which can be as, as widespread as what I've just talked about, who have seen it as a disqualification. Because of this thing, whether it be a lack of strength in yourself or an infirmity or a frailty, whether it be a hardship or a situation in life that you just feel, I, th- I just feel squeezed. I just feel like there's, there's it's such a serious situation, I just can't take my gaze off it. Whether you feel like there's an insult or a, or a persecution that's been toward your life from somebody else, and you've seen that thing as a disqualification. You've just felt, I can't. I can't step into the reality of what God's talking about. I can't hear these prophetic words and receive them. I can't because of this thing. God wants to deal with that today. He wants to, t- he wants to bring you into a place where you're receiving from him again in it. He's going to deal with the situation. He's going to deal with the situation. But first of all, we have to hear his answer that says, my grace, my strength, my power. Amen? So there's, there's a specific response for people who feel like this a sense of weakness has been a disqualification. God's writing that off. He's just saying, this is an opportunity for me to show myself in your life. Amen? And secondly, there's a response for some individuals who have, who have taken on a weakness and it's become part of your identity. It's become so knitted into who you feel you are that you can't separate it out from you. And so you, you, you feel deaf to what God is saying because, oh, it's who I am. It would be like Paul saying, this thorn in the flesh is just me. It's just who I am. There's a sense of identity in it now. It's taken what I would call a root. And God wants to deal with that as well. He wants to speak to you about who you really are because you are not your weaknesses. You are not the calamity or the hardship that has happened to your life. It is not you. It's not part of your identity. Your identity is in Christ. It's in who he is. Amen. So I don't want to make a big, a big song and dance about the individuals that really feel, yes, that's me. I've disqualified myself because of it, or I've, it's become part of my identity. But I really do feel that God wants you to know that he's laying his hand upon you. And so, as elders, I'd like us to be able to lay hands upon you. So we're not going to do that right now. But at the close of the gathering, I'd like you to come forward. And we'll lay our hands upon you. For you to know that weakness is not a disqualification for you. It's an opportunity God's going to show his strength and his power. And weakness is not a part of your identity. Your identity is in Christ and in who he is. So I know the Holy Spirit's been doing that. My encouragement to you, my exhortation to you, my request of you is do not write yourself off from response. Do not put it to the side and think, I've got other things to do. I'll just go collect the kids and I'll pretend like it never happened. The Holy Spirit has put his finger on something. He wants to release you into a greater sense of his strength, a greater sense of his power, a greater sense of his purpose, a greater sense of his grace. But there is going to be an effect with the laying on of hands in that area because of the prophetic word that came. 
Amen? But for all of us, for all of us, the exhortation from the Lord today is to remember it is the Lord who is our strength. It really is him. He is saying, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. It's like he's calling us off the boat onto the water, saying, be strong in these days in a supernatural way. But by calling us, he's giving us the power to do it. He's giving us the persuasion, the faith to believe it. He's giving us the permission, the grace to enter into it. So for all of us, in whatever situation we're in this week, work or play, home or school, wherever it is, call upon the Lord. Receive strength from him. Know that it is the Lord who is your strength. And my goodness, the days ahead of us are going to be filled with the things of God. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pray and I'm going to hand back to T. But for those who need to respond, don't forget it. You come forward. But Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that you speak to us. Every time we come to you, you speak. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word to us today, that your grace is sufficient. For your word to us that your power is being perfected in us and that you, Lord, are our strength. We trust in you, Lord Jesus. We acknowledge again today that, that all that you require of us, you really are for us. That, Lord Jesus, it's all through you. It's all because of you and it's all about you and so therefore it's all for your glory. So for each one of us today, we simply draw near to you again. We wait upon you again, asking, Lord, that you would fill us afresh with your strength, with your power through the Holy Spirit. Because these really are days you've spoken to us to be strong, to be strong together. But Lord, we're asking that we would all enter into a greater sense of you being our strength, Lord. Really you being our strength. We ask this in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. T, can I hand to you? Thank you, Lord. Um, I just really felt specifically as Joshua was ministering and teaching us um, this morning that uh, the Lord wants to heal specifically those people with offenses in their life um, and hurts that they've just been carrying around with them, that things that have happened to them, um, just that his grace right now this morning is sufficient, that, that there's a breakthrough for you this morning, that if you've been carrying around those things in your life, that there's a breakthrough for you because his grace is sufficient. Amen. Amen. Josh, thank you so much for that word. God's putting things in us to be strong together. I don't want us to miss about that word either, though. Although we understand that his grace is sufficient, you are going to need to speak that to one another. It's not word just for you to hold on to. There are going to be moments we're going to speak to each other. His grace is sufficient. That we don't coddle all the time. There's a moment of transformation that needs to take place, and you're going to say, His grace is sufficient. You don't want to miss what God can do in the strength of His grace to say His strength and His glory. So I just want to take a moment in the word that just came. We're just going to pray right now for those that have taken offense and been hurt because we don't want to let that pass by. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but nonetheless, there are people here. God doesn't speak things randomly. God speaks things specifically. So Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for your grace. We want to thank you for your grace that you love us so much that you don't leave us the way we are. So, Father, I want to thank you for your word this morning through Josh. But, Lord, I want to thank you just now that as you spoke through your servant, Deborah, Lord, those that have taken offense and been hurt, right now in the name of Jesus, let that go. Right now in the name of Jesus, let that go. His grace is sufficient. 
Don't let that, as Josh say, take root. But right now, God's saying, let that go. And his grace comes into your life to heal you and forgive you. Yeah? We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So as Josh said, if, if that's you, we're going to come up and lay hands. I also want to just say, there may be some people here that feel weak because they don't know Jesus. Perhaps the greatest weakness. You don't know this Jesus we've been talking about today, but you'd like to know him. Because you see, his grace is towards you as well. We all know that for ourselves because we all were once lost ourselves. I know when he made that call and that appeal to me, he said, come on. He says, my grace is sufficient. And my grace is in my son. And his name's Jesus. He loves you and me so much that he sent him for me, for my sin, for your sin to save us. And what is that sin? Things that separate us from God. Lies, stealing, hurt, disappointment, depression, all these things that keeps you from him. But God wants to bring you home. So if that's you, come on up forward. We'd love to introduce you to Jesus. If that's you, come and see me. And if you need anything else, we are a church that believe God does the impossible. Sorry, we do. We just say God's doing it over and over. If you need healing, if you need breakthrough, if you need prevent, whatever it is, we just know our God does it. Amen? So if that's you as well, please don't hesitate to come as well. But otherwise, folks, have a great week. Go get your kids. Don't forget your kids. Don't leave them here. Uh, praise God. Have a great week, folks. Bless you. Hi, my name's T. I'm one of the pastors here at All Nations Church. Thank you for watching our Sunday gathering online. I hope what you've heard today has strengthened you in your faith and inspired you in your love for God. I would also encourage you to take the next step. Come and join us in person. We are rediscovering the truth that gathering together is in the church's very DNA. And something powerful happens when we come together. So we would love to have you join us here on a Sunday. We meet here at the All Nations Center behind me at 10.30 a.m. and everyone is welcome. If, it, if visiting us in Cardiff is a challenge for you, maybe you live in another part of the UK or even in another nation, we would encourage you to find a church in your area, plug in and reach the world where you are. If you don't know of any churches in your locality or for whatever reason, joining a church is a challenge for you, please contact us and we will do all we can to help you. We hope to hear from you and see you very soon. God bless.